You ever start a day and you're working on something and you think you're going to be done pretty quickly? <laughs> Maybe, for example, pretend you're about to go live on stream. You open up OBS and you're like, oh, this is going to be great. I think it's going to be maybe a three-hour stream. We're going to just figure out a couple things in the middle with tweaking the build. And we're just going to be done after three, maybe four hours. And then we're done. And it's going to be great. We're going to stop the stream. We're going to immediately click start recording. We're going to record a video for everyone on YouTube. And they're going to be like, yo, that's so good. I'm so excited. Let's go. That was so easy. And it's 9.30 p.m. right now. <laughs> I started streaming at, I think, 2. It's been a longer day. It's been a little bit of a longer day than I was anticipated. What we did on stream today is, you know, definitely check up on the uh, the previous videos if you haven't seen it. Uh, we've been going through a whole journey trying to find our league starter, and we kind of honed in on a self cast ball lightning of static hero fant. Good news is we're just not going to bury the lead there. Good news is I'm still very happy about this. But today was I'm calling it the puberty of builds. <laughs> it's the puberty of the build, which is this very strange inflection point for a lot of builds that I mean, we can say around level 70, 80, maybe getting into level 90, particularly builds that may be looking for some sort of transition, perhaps into low life, perhaps into mana, a couple things that we're kind of doing here with this build. And this inflection point can be pretty uncomfortable trying to figure it out at least, like trying to figure out what are the items that I need to acquire, what are the stats, maybe there's like res or stats, I'm just gonna be speaking exactly what I'm trying to solve right now. Um, res or stats are something that might become uncomfortable if you acquire some uniques that may not have that res and stats. So that's what we did on stream today. It was over six hours long. I was only budgeting for about three hours today, but it was pretty good. So we're just gonna show you guys some of the uh, rare alchemy rolled up chisel and elk tier 16 map that I did on what I consider pretty reasonable gear. Going into this build, it's got some interesting restrictions on how you want to think about it that make it pretty unique compared to a lot of other builds. The main thing that we're doing here is we're using Ball Lightning of Static, which is a cooldown-based skill that doesn't have a duration tag. You can't scale the projectiles. It is a projectile, but not really. You can't scale the projectiles on it. It doesn't do AOE damage. It just does these like single arcing lightning bolts to a bunch of enemies. It's a very unique skill, but it synergizes really, really nicely with this mana-based playstyle because it's effectively snapshotting for two seconds at a time your arcane cloak and whatever, you know, synergistic uh, buffs with Archmage and all that. So when it has this damage up time, it's actually very, very effective. However, when you don't have any charges left of the cooldown, it can feel kind of uncomfortable. And cooldown recovery rate's not really a stat that you have access to at very low level. So the playstyle here is very tempo-based. You're really cognizant of your cooldowns. You're not just spamming like, okay, spam, go, spam, go, spam. You're kind of thinking of your charges as you're going. And this gets a lot better later on when you can get cooldown recovery rate, especially on your belt and your boots. That makes a night and day difference where you kind of don't even butt up against it unless you're fighting like a really big boss where you kind of are looking to spam the skill. And this is basically what we've run into. So I'll just show you guys where we're at right now and kind of what we're thinking about. These are my notes for the day and they're not even everything. I should have written more down. We were going through trying to figure out the exact inflection points for upgrading things. Thinking of really cool uniques that we could maybe wear. Very, very cheap ones that might feel really good. Cool little setups. The Sybil's Paw thing I think is really cool. To save myself editing in the future, I'm just going to put stuff on the screen <laughs> as I'm recording so I don't have to try to edit this in. This is a really cool weapon that you can use in like end of Act 3 that gives you some cast speed as well as gives you some mana and gives you life per enemy hit with spells as well as spell damage per chance to a block. So this is actually a really, really cool weapon for getting through the campaign or even as an offhand if you're doing something that we are doing, like using the Dark Arts Mastery up here for 60% increased damage while wielding two different weapon types, this guy right here. So this way we could use a Rune Dagger, for example, in our left hand, or our, sorry, my main hand, to me, left hand is the main hand. And then in our, our weird right hand, no one's, no one's right-handed, right? In their right hand, they would use the Sybil's Claw. And that would be a really cool way that you could sustain a lot of life as you're, uh, as you're playing. And it just has really good base stats, particularly, you know, since we care about mana. And if you do get a good amount of block, this actually can just directly scale increased spell damage, which is pretty cool. We're just thinking of some really cool things that you could do as you're leveling up. And then we started looking at the kind of checkpoints that you're going to hit. 
as you're going to upgrade the build. At what point, you know, maybe around level 75. I'm actually just going to say six link. The first thing I think you should buy, and this is the first thing that most people should buy if you're in trade league. And I'm going to be writing this guide just for trade league. This build is viable in SSF, but probably not as a league starter. Yeah, first thing, buy a corrupted six link. Doesn't matter what it is. You should be pretty comfortable and happy with that. After that, get your ball lightning of static. Depending on the prices, it could be just farm it yourself. I'll just talk to you guys man to XL right now, give you my plan. Basically, if ball lightning of static is still expensive, if I wasn't able to get it in my labs, I, I might run like two of each lab. That's kind of my current plan. I'll run two normal, two cruel, and two merc labs. And if I don't get my ball lightning of static in any of those six, then I'm going to go to bed Friday night, Saturday morning when I wake up, if ball lightning of static is still expensive, a couple hours into the stream, I'll go back to Merc Lab and I'll just keep doing, Mer assuming it's not a bad Merc Lab. If it has like 18 golden doors, I'll just skip it. But if it's a really easy Merc Lab, no doors, straight line down, um, I'll probably just farm Merc Lab for at least a couple hours and hope I don't get really unlucky. Ideally after that, I'll, I should have my ball lightning of static. And I'll also ideally after that, maybe we hit some good other gems that we can sell, maybe make a little bit of a profit. And then this can kind of have some cascading effects, which will allow us to buy some of our other items, maybe even a little bit quicker. You know, if we get stuck in the mines, <laughs> in the lab mines for too long, we could have enough money, ideally, that we could then, you know, kind of accelerate our upgrade. Because this is a build that doesn't require you to like level up your character as much. It's really just get a couple of baseline uniques to then turn into popping off. Like grabbing a dream fragments, a serious foible, and mind spiral. Honestly, you don't need the foible. You can just use a uh, amulet like this, and you should be good to go kind of baseline. This is just an amulet that dropped on the ground for me in SSF. This is good enough to be kind of baseline good to go. The big thing that the foible does, look at that 513 mana regen, 835 mana regen. So this will make a very big difference noticeably while you're trying to sustain your mana when you're fighting bosses. Um, you know, if you're sitting there and like casting constantly, right, your mana can get pretty low. Um, and you can see with the foible, it gets back pretty quick. But without the foible, if I'm just casting like crazy, it'll take much longer. This is even with my flask. You can see it takes much, much longer to get back up. And we want to keep it up as long as possible. Remember, keep it up. So yeah, that's my basic idea is get a corrupted six link ASAP. However, I can get ball lightning of static. That's the number one priority. That's the number two priority. After that, for comfort, this is absolutely not mandatory. I don't know if I'm going to strictly recommend a trigger weapon, but I'm currently using connectivity with Hydrosphere and Sigil of Power in my trigger weapon. And this just kind of takes a lot of the load off of having to press a bunch of buttons. Um, I'm going to recommend this, I think, to most people. The Hydrosphere does nothing once you get exposure on your gloves, but early on, it's kind of nice to have. If you can get a life gain on hit ring, that's insane. I strongly recommend doing that. Uh, sorry, life gain on hit with spells. This is, uh, I don't know if it's only Shaper, but I know it is on Shaper. This is really, really nice. This will help you sustain your life basically trivially, and you'll feel incredibly comfortable. And that's basically your setup right there. After that, you're basically looking, okay, I get my Mind Spiral, and I'm going to have a good amount of ES. This is the big swap, where we're going over to ES and Mana. Um, you'll drop the cast speed, drop the dual wielding nodes, because we don't care about any of that with the Ball Lightning of Static, which is the cool thing about this build. This is what I really like about the build is it allows us to unspec a lot of the nodes. I kind of took this temporarily. I'm going to unspec this later. We don't really care about these cast speed nodes. You know, the mana regen would be nice, but it's just not worth for the cast speed because ball lightning of static is static. It just sits there and it does its attack at a set interval and you don't have to scale cast speed or anything. So as long as you have enough where it's not annoying to put it on the ground, you're good to go. We listed alternatives for certain uniques that might be annoying to get. Voice of Storm particularly, I think Foible could be kind of expensive. So going for that or an Astromantis could be good early setup. Alternative body armors that are like not as good, etc. Anyway, we're kind of just going through all of this process. And that's what we did today on stream. And it's at the point now where I'm pretty darn happy with it. I see the light at the end of the tunnel. It basically was like I was driving through the tunnel. I was halfway through. I thought the next bend in the tunnel, I saw that little sliver of light. I thought that was almost the end. And I took that turn and there was a whole, I was only halfway through, actually. <laughs> I thought I was halfway through. I drove another day and then I'm actually now halfway through. We're at a really good point right now. I'm really happy. We're not going to belabor. Not that much else went on on the stream today. We did kill an eater. We killed a T16 eater, not a quest eater. It was kind of slow, right? It was a three phase, but it was relatively comfortable. It wasn't hard. You know, eater is not a hard fight. And mapping with this build feels pretty darn good. And yeah, basically today we confirmed that... This is going to be my league starter. I, I don't think there's any question now. Yeah, assuming there's no nurse in the patch notes next Thursday, 
one week from today. We're, we're definitely going to be watching that on stream, so be there. But I confirmed, assuming no nerfs, that this will be a really fun build to play for me next league. But I hope if this does look intriguing to you, you will join me on this journey. There will be challenges, there will be bumps. This isn't going to be a zero gear build, but it's a build that if you do give it some tender loving care, it'll be really fun and I'm, I'm really excited about it. Actually, what I did today, just to double check, is I went back to Standard League, I grabbed my Frostbank Elementalist and I was like, damn, that build's fun. That build's super fast, zipping around, just Frostbank blowing up the entire screen. And I thought when I went back to this guy that it would feel kind of bad and it didn't. I was actually very surprised that this build kind of held its own. It has its own character, it's not as zippy, but it actually resolved some of my final reservations that I was having about being really happy playing this versus just going back to Frostblink. And yeah, I'm, uh, I'm happy with where it's at. So, however, the next step after this is gonna be really exciting. So definitely get subscribed if you uh, wanna see the next step in this journey. We are going to be looking at high investment. So I'm gonna be spending my money. I got a couple of divines. We've actually, if you've seen on the screen, it says every sub divine a Shaco. I had like 1300 divines a week ago, but every time someone subscribes, we use a divine on the Shaco and uh, this thing's cursed. <laughs> We're still going. Uh, it's been a fun little thing we've been doing on stream. I still have plenty of money, and so I'm gonna dump this money into this build, and we're gonna see at high investment, can this thing feel real good? If I just get go double corrupted Cloak of Defiance, a super giga six tier one scepter, et cetera, double corrupted Mind Spiral, double corrupted at Zeri's Foible, getting the really crazy stuff. Um, and we're just we're gonna go ham tomorrow on stream, and I'm really excited about that. So that's what we're doing tomorrow. It's gonna be really fun, and that's basically gonna resolve any potential questions that we could have. However, if you do have any more questions, please let me know in the comments below. Most of you have been very helpful and insightful and constructive when we're talking about this. And I'm glad that you guys are excited about this as well. It feels so good seeing those comments. Like genuinely, I feel so good seeing those comments and you guys just being as excited as I am, even if you're not gonna play the build. And then after that, Sunday night, I'm flying to LA, gonna play PoE2. And then right when I get back, we got the announcement and I'll share with you guys all I saw at PoE2. I, I get to record some footage while I'm there. So it's going to be really, really fun. So yeah, thank you guys for everything. It's been an absolute blast over this past week. And uh, yeah, really excited for the future. So have a great rest of your day and I'll see you all tomorrow. Bye.